So what does it mean to play artistically or musically on the flute? In this video, we're going to be exploring those concepts, and I'm going to be giving you one of my favorite exercises to help you develop your own natural musical phrasing. So let's get to it. Hi. I'm Lance. I'm a professional flutist and teacher, and my goal is to inform and inspire your flute practice. In this video, we're going to be exploring what it means to play artistically on the flute. And to set the context for this discussion, I'm going to start by telling you a short story. A few years back, I was at this warm-up class for maybe about 200 flutists. We were all in a room and watching a very notable performer slash teacher on the stage giving us instruction. As many teachers do, this person gave an example of what to do and what not to do. These were both very well executed, but I found myself drawn to the example of what not to do. I found it incredibly beautiful and it got me thinking. This person had such great mastery of the flute that they were able to play the same phrase in multiple different ways very convincingly. Of course, you're always going to have a preference of one way over the other. And this is where individual artistry comes in. It's the choices that you make that are reflective of your individual personality and artistry as a musician. So today we're going to be exploring the concept of making artistic and musical decisions as they relate to phrasing. And we're going to be using my Saraband Exercises Worksheet, which is based on the famous Saraband from the A minor partita by J.S. Bach. I'm offering this worksheet as a free digital download on my website, so please check out the link in the description of this video for more information. This worksheet includes two simple exercises based on Bach's Saraband from the Partita in A minor, and for each of these exercises, you'll see that the music has two lines. The bottom line, which is in larger print, is the original music from the Saraband. I have added a few articulations just as suggestions, but if you have your own favorite articulations, please feel free to use whatever feels best to you. The top line is basically a simplified or reduced version of the bottom line, which is going to help us to clarify and explore our phrasing ideas. So let's start on the top line in exercise one. We're going to start by playing the top line just to acquaint ourselves with the four notes and not with any particular shape, no crescendo, no decrescendo, just very neutral and even, listening to the tone quality and listening to the implied harmony in the four notes. After you feel comfortable with those first four notes, I'm going to ask you to label each measure either more or less. If my math is correct, there are about eight different possibilities for the first four measures. For example, you could have put more, less, more, less. You also could have put less, more, more, less, and so on and so forth. I'm now going to encourage you to play whatever you had written on your worksheet. For example, if you had written more, less, more, less, this is what it might sound like. If you had written less, more, more, less, this is what that might sound like. I want to pause here to note that for some people, this stage alone might be very challenging to make this structure come out very clearly, whether it's less, more, less, more, more, less, more, less, whatever your structure may be. I would encourage you to record yourself and listen back and see if what you think is coming out is coming out clearly at a distance. You're also going to want to make sure that, as much as possible, your transitions between more and less are very smooth and seamless. 
When you feel comfortable with that, it's time for you to try a totally different combination to see if you can execute that one just as well as you did the first one. After trying a few combinations, you might find that one speaks to you a little bit more than the others. And it's this one that we're gonna go on with to the next step of exercise one. If you've picked your favorite version of less and more on the first four bars, then congratulations, you've actually made an artistic decision. Your decision could be totally different than mine and different than the next person. But the most important thing is that it's yours and that you do it with conviction. So let's try and apply that now to the lower line of music, which is the music from Bach Sarabande. And I specifically chose this music because it's not very noty. However, if this is too much of an ask for you, you've gotten already a lot of value just out of practicing those four notes on the top line. It's now time to apply the phrasing structure that you picked from the top line to the bottom line. My choice is going to be less, more, more, less. And this is what it sounds like. Let's also see what more, less, more, less sounds like. When applying your phrasing structure from the top line to all the notes in the bottom line, you're going to want to make sure that each note is integrated into that structure. We don't want any notes to stick out unnecessarily. It can sound very disjointed that way. In this particular phrase, probably the most common note to stick out is that first E. It's important to integrate that E as best as you can into the line, and especially so that it doesn't distract from your larger phrasing structure. Again, I would encourage you to record yourself to make sure that what you hear in your head is actually coming across to the listener. And when you feel comfortable with what you have, it's time to move on to exercise two on the worksheet. For exercise two, we're gonna start again by playing just the top line and listening for implied harmony as well as potential phrasing and shaping and pacing. It's now time to make some decisions. And this time, instead of just giving you the options more and less, I'm going to give you a number scale from one to six. Go ahead and mark each of those measures in exercise two with a number between one and six. One being the least and six being the most. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my choices right now. However, I don't want you to necessarily be influenced by my choices in any way. I want you to feel free to make choices of your own that make sense for you and sense for your playing as well.
I started by picking a high point, and for me, that was going to be in measure 14. I also knew that I didn't want to really use the extremes of my sound in this piece because I think it's a little bit more mellow and neutral and down the middle. So I only went from a two up to a five. I didn't use one or six. As you can see from my phrase structure, there is an overall build towards the end of this section while also having multiple peaks and valleys within. I'm now gonna try and play all the notes for you and it's probably not gonna be perfect, but it might give you an idea of how this concept translates into my real life playing. Similar to exercise one, I'm going to encourage you to explore multiple options for the phrasing structure in this music. By my calculations, there are about 96 possible outcomes. It doesn't mean that all 96 of those will make sense in the context of music, but hey, why not give it a try? If something seems preposterous, try it anyway, and try to do it convincingly. This way, when you come to your final decision, you're truly making an artistic choice. In addition to the large scale structure, which we've been discussing, there are also multiple opportunities for small shadings within the music based on the harmony and the shape of the line. And this is where knowledge of music theory and harmony will help you to take your artistry to even the next level. Some of the tools you have at your disposal are of course the volume, as well as things such as vibrato and tone color. To demonstrate tone color a little bit, here are the first few bars with a soft and rather narrow sound. I'm now going to try and play those first two bars again, still a bit softly, but with a more diffuse and wider sound. Make sure that all of your tools, such as volume, vibrato, and tone color, are helping to support your overall phrasing structure and make it clearer to the listener. It's tools like this that make you almost like a visual artist painting onto a canvas. However, in this case, your palette is sound. By making some simple artistic decisions about phrasing and pacing, you are essentially creating your own point of view or take on the music, as well as figuring out how to convey that to the listener. And hopefully this will create more engaging and exciting performances. Well, that's it for this video, and I hope you've gotten some value and enjoyment out of it. If so, please let me know in the comments and by giving it a like. Also, for more informational and inspirational flute content like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and please hit that notification bell as well. Thanks for watching.